That's my last duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that piece a wonder now. Fra Pandolf's hands worked busily a day, and there she stands. Would please you sit and look at her. I said Fra Pandolf by design, for never read strangers like you that pictured countenance, the depth and passion of its earnest glance, but to myself they turned, since none puts by the curtain I have drawn for you but I, and seem to say would ask me, <laughs> if they durst, how such a glance came there. So not the first are you to turn and ask thus, Sir, twas not her husband's presence only called that spot of joy into the Duchess' cheek. Perhaps Fra Pandal chanced to say, yet her mantle laps o'er my lady's wrist too much, or yet paint can never hope to recreate the faint half-flush that dies along her throat. Such stuff was courtesy, she thought, and cause enough for calling up that spot of joy. She had a heart, how shall I say, too soon made glad, too easily impressed, she liked whate'er she looked on, and her looks went everywhere. Sir, twas all one. My favour at her breast, the dropping of the daylight in the west, in the bough of cherries some officious fool broke in the orchard for her, the white mule she rode with round the terrace, all and each would draw from her alike the approving speech, or blush at least. She thanked men. Good. But thanks somehow, I know not how, as if she ranked my gift of a nine hundred years old name with anybody's gift. Who'd stoop to blame this sort of trifling, even had you skill in speech, which I have not, to make your will quite plain to such a one and say, just this or that in you disgusts me? Oh, here you miss, or there obtain the mark. And even if she let herself be lessened so, nor plainly said, her will to yours for sooth and made excuse, for well, even then would be some stooping. And I choose never to stoop. Oh, sir, she smiled, no doubt, whene'er I passed her. But who passed without much the same smile? This grew... I gave commands, and all smiles stopped together. There she stands as if alive. Now, it would please you rise, will you meet the company below then? Yet I repeat, your master's known munificence is ample warrant that no just pretense of mine for dowry will be disallowed though his fair daughter's self, as I avowed at starting, is my object. <laughs> uh, nay, sir, we'll go together down. Notice Neptune, though, taming the seahorse, thought a rarity, <laughs> which Klaus of Innsbruck cast in bronze for me.